Uh, so I became a Christian when I was a child. My parents were both Christians. We grew up as a family going to church. And when I was eight years old, I accepted Jesus into my heart. So obviously throughout my life at different times, uh, in junior high and in high school and in college, I had new moments where I made kind of new commitments as I, as I got older and as I understood things better. But I think all of those new commitments still harken back to that first decision that you make when you're a little child. I feel like almost every day I have to kind of remake that, co that commitment and in some ways those, those recommitments become easier and easier as you go. Uh, and all of it goes back to being eight. You know, if I had a, an eight-year-old faith today, it wouldn't be a, a good enough faith. It, it, would, it wouldn't work for a 50-year-old person. I've practiced and uh, paid attention to trying to, to really experience God and see God in some, it's like playing golf and playing basketball. And those have been both places where I've cultivated a kind of a life of prayer um, around that. There's certainly been times I've been playing basketball and I've completely lost my center and I'm like mad or angry or frustrated. But there have been certainly moments when I've been able to really see God present in those spaces as, as I've been able to cultivate kind of a life of prayer around that. And then of course uh, worship at church has, is, is oftentimes just been a, a, is a wonderful time to kind of see God working both in the emotions and even sometimes in the words. There's times that at church, um, I go to church where we do hymns on Sunday mornings and there's times I get struck by the words, some person that wrote a poem a hundred years ago, that it's just amazing how God kind of speaks into that space. So I do see God at, uh, at work in special ways in some of those places where I've tried to cultivate kind of listening uh, and looking for God. And I think the Bible uh, kind of outlines the ways that you hope God would change your life uh, in a few different places. In Galatians, um, Paul says that the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and self-control. Uh, in uh, 1 Peter you get a similar list. It says add to your faith uh, knowledge to knowledge, goodness to goodness to love. And um, to the degree that, I, that it's possible, I, I hope and I, and I pray that that would be the journey I'm on. That, um, that uh, today more than yesterday I'd have a bit more peace, a bit more patience, a bit more um, love because of the work God's doing and um, sometimes it's hard to see that from one day to another. He, that, that process is sometimes painful, um, sometimes exhilarating, um, that process sometimes is slow and sometimes it happens, there's moments that really a lot happens uh, in a short amount of time. You kind of uh, grow sometimes in bursts and sometimes slowly but that's that's the change he's made. He's uh, Another way the Bible talks about that is, is we're supposed to be made into Christ's image. And, uh, you know, I haven't attained that at all <laughs> to the degree that I, that I want to someday. But that's, that's who I'm hoping to be. And I think those are the places and the ways that God actually changes us. Um, it's in our circumstances. If we're listening, if we're uh, open, if we're willing to be um, uh, molded and shaped, uh, we become more like Christ. Um, what advice would I give for someone? I think one piece of advice I would give is um, carve out time to um, to immerse yourself in Scripture and let the Bible become um, a food. And, um, and my advice is that um, Scripture becomes a resource into the into those places. And uh, so I'll give an example. Um, there's been times I've been stuck or um, hurt or frustrated. And uh, it's in those moments that I that, that some of the stories uh, about God finding us even when we're not looking for Him becomes something I can just trust, even if I'm not experiencing it.